McLean. 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 Okay, we're in the McLean house. Uh, this would be the last stop when President, Ed, President Edwards was alive. He, uh, on January 4th, 1758, at Stockbridge, that's when I believe three ministers met at Stockbridge because Edwards didn't want to make the decision himself to leave. Uh, and the way Dwight tells the story in his 1830 biography of Edwards is that the ministers counseled together and they said, yes, Edwards, you should go. And on January 4th of 1758, uh, that's when he decided to leave. And the story goes that he, uh, he broke down weeping and crying. I would guess probably because of his love uh, for the Indians at Stockbridge, uh, but also realizing that there's wisdom in a council of elders, safety in a council of elders, the book of Proverbs says. And so El Edwards uh, submitted to the, the will of his brethren and he came here to Princeton. Um, just driving in a vehicle uh, this, this distance, I can imagine uh, how Edwards must have been. Also being in January, uh, how cold it must have been. Um, but he got here, and his doctor, Dwight, says that Edwards had the shot on February 13th. I don't know if that's a misprint, because Dr. Shippen, in the letter he writes to Sarah said that he got the shot on February 23rd. So whether it was February 13th or February 23rd, that's when Edwards uh, had the inoculation for the smallpox. Everything looked to be okay, and then a fever set in, and then on March 22nd is when he passed away. I want to read to you the last words uh, that we have recorded of Edwards. Uh, his family had not traveled with him yet. He was waiting until the springtime uh, for them to make the journey. Uh, but his daughter Lucy was uh, with him. And uh, he knew that he was leaving soon. Uh, his throat was swelling up and he, he couldn't eat or drink. And he says this, Dear Lucy, it seems to me to be the will of God that I must shortly leave you. Therefore, give my kindest love to my dear wife and tell her that the uncommon union, which has so long subsisted between us, has been of such a nature as I trust is spiritual and therefore will continue forever. And I hope that we, she, and I hope that she will be supported under so great a trial and submit cheerfully to the will of God. And as to my children, you are now like to be left fatherless, which I hope will be an inducement to you all to seek a father who will never fail you. As to my funeral, I would have it to be like Mr. Burr's and any additional sum of money that might be expected to be laid out that way I would have it disposed of to charitable uses. So they finished writing the letter of Edward's last words, and they thought that he had passed, and either in Marston's biography or Ian Murray's, I can't remember which one, uh, one of them speculates that perhaps the uh, leaders at the school here were wondering what was going to happen to Princeton, what was going to happen uh, perhaps in the theological world. And uh, whatever the case, Edwards uh, spoke one last phrase, Trust in God, and you need not fear. So I hope that these videos uh, have been beneficial for you this week. We've seen a lot of places. We've seen where Edwards was born. We've seen where he went to school and studied. We have seen where he spent most of his life as a pastor. We've seen where, uh, unfortunately, the way that he was kicked out of the church, basically, at Northampton. Instead of being vengeful, uh, he was humble, and he went to Stockbridge, and as you saw on the plaque at the first church, the first congregational church of Stockbridge, they knew and he knew that it was the humble parish in the wilderness, especially compared to the prestigious church at Northampton that he had spent uh, over two decades at. But he made use of his time. And in that humble parish in the wilderness with a small congregation being dismissed,